this section before we have a little more and come back on to do some more comedy. Uh, I've worked with Pete before, another bright club, he was very funny indeed. Please welcome to the stage the wonderful, wonderful biologist, Mr. Pe I've done it again, Pete Mills. <laughs> Uh, Given credit, it is a whole two syllables, Pete Mills. Uh, never mind. Um, <laughs> it's honoured to be here, honoured to be on uh, last, when everyone's jaded and desperate for the toilets. Or is that just me? Uh, that's a bit of a joke and a little bit true. It's all correct, one. Um, I don't mind even if you're too tired to laugh, actually, because the thing is, uh, we're filming this, and whatever happens, uh, I'm going to edit in audio from Life of the Apollo. So, you can go if you want. <laughs> but no, I mean, no. Sorry, joking aside, there is an important reason that you're here. Your ticket money is paying for all the cocaine and sex toys I've got backstage. <laughs> so yeah, the system works. <laughs> anyway, good. That's the small talk done. Let me tell you about myself. Uh, I am a bi biologist, and I... Oh my god, it's <laughs> It's a little depressing that that's going to be the biggest laugh in my set. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> here we go, here we go, right. So I work with sea squirts, and that is like a real thing, it's the, that's the actual name, sea squirts. And that's, you're laughing already, excellent, laughing at my life, essentially. <laughs> no, laughing, uh, yeah. Anyway, they're called sea squirts, and that's a real thing, it's not a euphemism I've made up, it's not like a, a word for like ocean jizzing, or pond snagging, or swimming pool spunking, or anything like that. I think that's all real, real things I've heard. No, I studied them, they're a real animal, and I studied their development. And their development includes metamorphosis um, into this really radically different adult form. Um, but the thing is, I use them as a model for development, and what I never really thought before is um, if humans then don't go through metamorphosis, um, if this is just an uh, unrepresentative model, if it's just a monster, yes, yeah, got it in there! <laughs> Subtle! <laughs> if this is just a monster, then, uh, you can get rid of it. Then my PhD is a complete waste of time, my four year PhD. That's fine, it's only four years, and you know, it's not like your twenties are considered important years of your life, are they? That's right, isn't it? That's, that's, sorry, what'd you say? You said... It's not important. Okay. Um, what I thought you actually said was, they are important, and if you screw them up, then you ruin the rest of your life. That's how this joke was going to work, but you actually spoke. Thank you, thank you very much. Anyway... Should we wind that back? Oh, they are important. Oh, no. Uh, doesn't really work anymore. Never mind. <laughs> it's fine, the improvisation skills, good to use. Anyway, right. So, um, that's what I'm going to spend the next few minutes doing, working out whether humans go through metamorphosis. Now, you might be thinking, hold on a minute, couldn't you have done this at home by yourself? Uh, but no, I have to do it in front of 200 strangers. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules. <laughs> okay, so. Um, if humans did go through metamorphosis, then it'd be puberty, wouldn't it? That's the time where there's a lot of physical changes, a lot of development. I probably could have done with a bit of extra development, but no, it's no, it's like, don't worry, it's it's probably enough. It, it, yeah. <laughs> probably too. Um, but there is a problem with that idea. See, sea squirt metamorphosis is a very consistent process, and the idea that um, puberty progresses at a consistent rate that's strongly disproved by one extreme data point. Justin Bieber. <laughs> ah, Justin Bieber. Whose genitals, I would imagine, probably look like Grant, Peggy and Phil Mitchell. In that precise order. <laughs> Everyone's thinking about that then. Excellent. Um, but it's not just Justin Bieber, there's variation throughout. I mean, at the end of your teenage years, you're supposed to have discovered sex, haven't you? Uh, but the thing is, I was never that popular with the girls when I was a teenager. Which I've never really understood, because I had this like really interesting hairstyle at the time, which I can only describe as a combination of the afro and the mullet, which I believe you're familiar with this evening. Um, and yeah, the afro and the mullet. And so you'd think that wouldn't work. And you're right, it didn't. It was an atrocity. It was... My hair should have been tried uh, for crimes against humanity, along with Hitler and Pol Pot and Megan Chelsea. 
Um, so yeah, okay, so instead of having sex, I spent most of my teenage years doing the next best thing, playing Pokemon. <laughs> and um, I think that's probably why I'm doing a PhD in biology, because I basically wanted to do something that was essentially just playing Pokemon, but that made my parents proud. <laughs> but see, the interesting, the interesting thing happened shortly after I accepted um, a position to do a PhD in biology, um, because I, at that point, accidentally fell into the first proper relationship in my life. I don't mean literally fell, it wasn't called like, ah, oh, ah, oh, yeah, I like that too, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, nah, that's, the, that's a different story. No, and this is a big change for me, because um, before, all I ever thought about was Pokemon, that's all I ever thought about. And the only decisions I ever made were, you know, Charmander, Squirtle, or Bulbasaur. <laughs> <laughs> now, I had, now I was introduced to all these big ideas, you know, all these new decisions. Missionary, Dobby, or reverse cowgirl. <laughs> Although I did once try to attempt an advanced exposition called the Bulbasaur. Shortly um, after I moved to Manchester to do this PhD, um, this girl and I, we broke up. And um, that was two years ago, and I've been single ever since. Um, and here's the thing. They say men can't multitask, right? But happened every evening since I've been able to cry whilst wanking. <laughs> so explain that, science. <laughs> and I guess, I guess what bothers me is that if I've come to the end of my metamorphosis, if I'm, if I'm out of that, why does it feel that I'm back being a teenager again, you know, playing Pokemon instead of having sex? Or doing things with my life that, um, you know, might be a complete waste of time, that's not what I should be doing. But here's a thought I've We now know the human brain keeps on developing up until the age of about 25, which is what age I'll be when I complete my PhD. I suppose maybe I should just uh, reserve judgement until then. Maybe these sort of things can only be understood in retrospect. Because if you think about it, whether it's a period of scientific, whether it's a piece of scientific research or a period of a life, you know the importance of it might not become clear for years or decades later. And so maybe you've just got to do what feels right in that meantime. Don't overanalyze things until you're there. And if that means doing something that might feel like a complete waste of time, uh, so be it. If that means just playing Pokemon and seven sets, so be it. Although you never know what's around the corner. Because, very recently, um, after two years of being single, I did meet somebody, and um, that meant that for the first time in two years, I did have sexual intercourse. And that's a long time, and I was a little worried how it would go, um, but I'm relieved to say I did put it in the right hole. <laughs> because she had an infection in her left ear. <laughs> This girl was actually in the audience, <laughs> with her best friend. Um, so that's probably ruins now, yeah. Especially after that Bulbasaur the expert. Oh well, I guess maybe this whole set was a complete waste of time. Thank you. Good night.